It's time for my 2K Q&A video where I answer all of your burning questions. Plus, it's finally time for my giveaway. Hello book friends, I'm Jen and welcome to my reading life. Today I'm going to answer the first part of the questions that you all submitted and I have to say you really brought the questions. <laughs> In fact there are so many questions that I'm actually going to break this up into a three-part video series. So today we are going to do part one because I really wanted to answer all of your questions. I didn't want to have to just pick and choose. However I have um, grouped some of the questions together Together because they were very similar and consolidated some questions into one question uh, just to keep things moving. Otherwise, uh, I would be here all day. <laughs> um, so to help with the flow of the questions, I actually divided them into six different categories. And the categories are early reading life questions, general reading questions, and then general book questions genre and specific book questions, personal questions, and booktube related questions. I will answer a few questions from each of those categories in each video. And be sure you stay tuned to the end of this video because I am going to give you all the details on the giveaway. And now, without further ado, and because we have a lot to get through, let's dive into the questions. So question one is from the early reading life questions category. And the question is, do you remember the first book when you were very young where you realized, hey, I can read this? Now you guys are taking me back a very long way, <laughs> but to my recollection, some of the early books that I felt like I could read the words in them were definitely the Richard Scarry books. And if you're not familiar with Richard Scarry, the, his books are, they're really, they're picture books, but they are um, not really stories per se. They're lots of pictures of different things, different items, different types of people, all done in animal format. And then there is the word listed under the picture for what it's describing. So um, one of my favorite pages was the page all about food. So they'd have like eggs and the word eggs underneath and bacon and the word bacon underneath. And I just, I looked at that page over and over again. So definitely Richard Scarry. Of course, I grew up in the 70s and Dr. Seuss was huge, so Dr. Seuss was definitely one of the early uh, type of books that I felt like I could read. Um, and along the same lines as Dr. Seuss, I really loved the book Put Me in the Zoo. Um, and something about those polka dots, I have always had an affinity for polka dots and maybe it comes from Put Me in the Zoo. So, <laughs> um, but those were definitely early books I felt like I could read from what I remember. 40 some odd years ago. The next question is, I would love to hear what books and authors you remember loving as a young new reader. For sure, the Francis books by Russell Hoban. I especially loved Bread and Jam for Francis. And I'm not sure if it's that one or one of the other books where she like runs away from home, but she runs away and hides under her dining room table. I don't know why, but that just caught my fancy and I still remember that to this day. Um, I also loved, of course, and this is not my copy, this is my son's copy, but Where the Wild Things Are by Maury Sendak. Uh, this is a fantastic picture book. Um, I remember loving it when I was a kid. And then also another one is Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst. I I thought that book was so funny. I love the pictures in it, um, the illustrations, and yeah, it's a great, fun little book. <clears throat> and then what was the book that got you into reading? And to be honest, I am not sure what book like really clicked and got me into reading, but this book that I'm holding here has a very special place in my heart and it was definitely a book that I loved when I was little. And that is The Story of Holly and Ivy by Rumor Godden. Uh, this is not my childhood copy, but this is the exact edition that I read as a child. And this is a lovely story. It's about Ivy and she's an orphan. She has no one to be with on Christmas Eve and she sees this doll, Holly, uh, in a toy shop window and she wishes very very hard um, for a doll and Holly wishes very very hard for somebody to take her home and this is the magical story of what happens to the two of them and 
yes, I just absolutely adore this book and um, is definitely one that when I think back on my childhood, definitely got me really loving books. Now we're going to move on to just some general reading questions. The first question in this category is actually a group of questions which came from a few different people and they are, how in the world do you read so many books? Are you a fast reader? Do you have a set time every day to read? I'm always amazed by the amount of reading you accomplish. Do you prefer reading at a specific time of the day and how long do you read a day generally? What does your reading schedule look like? I would be interested to know what your usual reading schedule is and how many hours do you read each day? So lots of questions about how I read as much as I do and what my daily reading schedule looks like. So let's dive into that. First off, I have to say I am a fairly fast reader and I always have been. So that, you know, the speed at which you read is the speed at which you read. And I do read at a fairly good clip, <laughs> which also means I don't remember very well things that I read. So there is a downside to fast reading. Um, so that's the first thing that helps me get through quite a number of books. Um, and then in terms of what my reading schedule is, is I do read um, at different set times of the day, most days, um, especially most weekdays. My weekends look different um, because I'm with my family. Um, but during the weekdays, especially during the school year when my son is in school, I will read while I'm eating breakfast and lunch. So anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, both of those times. I will often take time to sit down in the afternoon, have a little snack, read for a few minutes there. So maybe I get another, you know, 15 to 30 minutes in then as well. Same thing after dinner. If I have some downtime, um, then I will get in a little bit of reading then. And I always, always read before bed. And that can be anywhere, depending on how tired I am, from 15 minutes to an hour to a few hours to staying up way too late and reading well into the wee hours of the morning, which I do less and less these days, but still does happen on occasion when I am just in the midst of a book that I cannot put down. So I don't really have any like hard and fast, how is it that I read as much as I do? I do often um, always have multiple books on the go. So if there's something that I'm not quite in the mood for at one moment in time, I can switch and read something else. I also always, not always, but a lot of the times I will have an audiobook going and I'll listen to it when I'm by myself in the car, when I take my walks. I'll also listen to it when I'm doing things like washing dishes or sometimes making dinner if I'm not making something too complicated. If I'm doing a puzzle, I'll listen to an audiobook. So I have a lot of different ways that I fit in reading throughout my days. And I will say, if you want to read more, the best thing you can do is make it a priority. So rather than being on your phone, and trust me, I get sucked into my phone just like everybody else does when I, you know, wanted to sit down and read and then suddenly, you know, 30 minutes have gone by and I've just been, you know, scrolling Instagram. But making reading a priority, setting aside, even if it's just a few minutes every day to yourself, whether that's a bedtime, first thing in the morning, you know, while you're eating lunch or sometime in the afternoon, whatever works best for you, making it a priority, you know, th that's how I get reading in. So I prioritize it over other things. Okay, Whew. <laughs> that was a lot in that answer. So the next question which is kind of the opposite of the question I just answered is, I fall into slumps frequently. So my question is, what do you do to get out of a reading slump? This is an excellent question. And I have to say it's different at different times, depending on what's the reason for the slump. Um, so sometimes I just don't read anything. You know, I just take a little break from reading. Like, you know, that that's perfectly okay. Um, so sometimes I don't read. Sometimes I just lean into either um, something that's really easy to read. Like, you know, I don't mean it has to be super simplistic. But for me, like, reading a mystery or reading a middle grade book is something that I can easily get into and get through. And sometimes that's what I need to kind of get over that slump. Also rereading definitely helps when I'm in a slump. And that's only something that I've started doing recently because I am a relatively new rereader. Um, 
And then other than that, sometimes I find it helpful to go onto social media, whatever it is, you know, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, wherever it is that you go to find um, bookish information and, you know, kind of look through and see what other people who read what you like to read are reading and talking about. And sometimes that'll get me inspired or excited about a specific book. And then I'll pick that book up and that will get me out of my reading slump. So sometimes utilizing social media in that way definitely helps. The last uh, question in this category is how many books do you own in your entire house plus any you have lent out? <laughs> Honestly, I have no idea. Hundreds for sure. Um, but actually, I just discovered through somebody on Instagram, and now I'm blanking on who it was, there is an app called Book Buddy. And you can keep track of your home library through Book Buddy. And I've decided to make this my little project. It's probably going to take me months to get through it. Um, but you can, you know, import all your books into Book Buddy. And you can even put like physically where they are located in your house. You can put in there if you have lent it out and who you lent the book to. Um, you can keep track of all kinds of information when you bought the book, who recommended it to you. Like it's really fun and I'm enjoying inputting my books into there, but I have only scratched the surface. I think I have about 150 books in there right now. And I have lots, lots more to go. I haven't even touched the bookshelves in this room yet. <laughs> um, so definitely hundreds and hundreds. But once I do get the Book Buddy app all um, completed and all of my books in there, I will definitely let you guys know how many books that came out to. Let's move on to the next category of questions, which are just general book questions. And the first questions are, what is your favorite book of all time? What are your favorite books and do you like to reread books? And what book have you reread the most? Now, these questions came from different people and I kind of grouped them all together so I can talk about them in one fell swoop. <laughs> For the book that always comes to mind when people ask me what is my favorite book, this is the book I think of, and that is Happy All the Time by Lori Colwin. And I know I've talked about this book a lot on here, but I just adore it and I'm thinking about doing a special dedicated video to Lori Colwyn so stay tuned for that. Um, other of my favorite books include The Shell Seekers for sure, um, Coming Home as well by Rosamond Pilcher, um, definitely Miss Bunkle's book by D.E. Stevenson. This is a relatively new favorite of mine, 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanth, uh, the entire All Creatures Great and Small series by James Harriet, wonderful. Um, and another favorite is The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. You guys know I love my family sagas. <laughs> Those are definitely some of my top favorite books and not all of my favorite books by any means. Um, but then in terms, the other part of this question was about rereading and definitely the book that I have reread the most is that's the back of it, <laughs> is Happy All the Time by Lori Colwyn. As I mentioned earlier, I only recently became a rereader. And up until then, this was one of the few books that I had reread. Um, I've probably read it, I don't know, six or seven times now. And I'm going to buddy reread it with a friend in September. So that will make, I don't know, we'll have the umpteenth time I read this one. As I mentioned, I'm a recent rereader. Um, I actually have a video dedicated to rereading and I will link that in the description box if you want to check out all of my thoughts on rereading. Um, but I've definitely enjoyed revisiting with some of my favorite authors, particularly like Jane Austen, Agatha Christie, Mary Stewart, um, and other favorite books that I haven't read for a long, long time. It's been really wonderful to reread those over the past few years, and I am continuing to become more and more of a rereader as time goes on. The next question is, and again, this is kind of a bunch of questions all grouped together. What is your go-to comfort read? The book you reach for when life is crazy. What book do you find yourself recommending the most for others to read? 
What book or books have stood the test of time as a read that you still think about today as a favorite and would categorize as a solid recommendation to someone else? Is there a book that you love so much that you would like everyone to read? So this is kind of about the books I gravitate towards when I want cozy, comforting reads and also books that I would recommend to other people. So let's talk about cozy, comforting reads first. For sure, um, obviously, Lori Colwin, this book, as well as all of her other books, I definitely reach for those when I want something comforting. Rosamond Pilcher, Agatha Christie, those are definitely books that are at the top of my list when I want something just that's like pure comfort and joy to me. I will definitely reach for some of those. As for recommending books, I think that's really challenging because everybody is so, so different as a reader. And without talking to you and asking you questions about the things you like to read and the types of books that you've loved in the past, I think it's really hard to make a blanket book recommendation. However, <laughs> for the purposes of this video, I am going to recommend one book, which if you enjoy the type of books that I enjoy reading, then the book that I think you should read if you haven't read it yet, let me grab it from the bottom of this pile, is by far and away The Shell Seekers by Rosamond Pilcher. I adore this book. And we are actually reading this book for the Cozy Reader Book Club in August. So if you've never read this, or if you have loved it and want to reread it, you're welcome to join us. I'll have all the information in the description box below about how to join the Cozy Reader Book Club, and we would love to have you join us. We'll be meeting on Saturday, August 17th to discuss this one. I know it looks a bit on the chunky side, but it is such a fast read. Once you get into it, you are not going to want to leave. So this is the book I recommend for people who enjoy the books that I read or the types of books that I read. The next question in this category is which of your favorite characters would you like to hang out with if that were possible? Well, so many, first of all, um, but I have five to share with you that I would like to hang out with as of today. Uh, the first is Eleanor from Sense and Sensibility. I think we are kindred spirits, Eleanor and I. Uh, Miss Bunkle from Miss Bunkle's Book by D.E. Stevenson, um, because I think she's a hoot. <laughs> uh, then Mrs. Polifax from the Mrs. Polifax series by Dorothy Gilman. You all know I'm having a love affair with Dorothy Gilman and Mrs. Polifax right now. And uh, yeah, she's my kind of feisty 60 year old. Um, next up, another uh, bit of a feisty woman, and that is Ruth Galloway, Dr. Ruth Galloway from the Dr. Ruth Galloway Mystery Series by Ellie Griffiths. And Ruth Galloway is a professor of archaeology, and uh, she keeps stumbling upon dead bodies that may be really, really old and, you know, archaeologically um, of interest. Um, and some of them might be recent murders. So, um, she gets involved with the police and this is one of my favorite mystery series. I love Ruth. She's a bit cantankerous, but I kind of like that about her. <laughs> and then lastly, definitely would love to spend time with Emma M. Lyon right now. Loving these books. I am taking the next book with me when I go on vacation next week and I can't wait to read it. So yes, subject to change at any time. And certainly there are lots of other characters that I would like to spend time with, but um, those are my, uh, my top five as of today. And then the next question is, what's your favorite location for a book to take place? Hands down, the UK, England in particular, but anywhere in the UK works for me. I am an Anglophile at heart. Give me all the cups of tea, um, the rainy days, um, all the cozy thatched cottages, and uh, I'm there. <laughs> and then next, who is your current favorite author? What authors have been most meaningful to you in different phases of your life, childhood, high school, early adulthood, or other? Well, I think I've probably mentioned most of my favorite authors already, but just to kind of go through some of my current favorites, Jane Austen, Rosamond Pilcher, Mary Stewart, Agatha Christie, James Harriet, Louise Penny, D.E. Stevenson. Those are all definitely at the top of my list. And I mean, there are definitely others. I thought, you know, it's so hard to like just pick a few or even just pick one. I just, I could never pick just one. <laughs> and then I really love the question about 
favorite authors from different phases of my life. So from childhood, definitely favorite authors would include Beverly Cleary, Noel Streetfield, Astrid Lindgren, Maud Hart Lovelace, uh, and Carolyn Keene. <laughs> um, or we could just say the Nancy Drew mystery series because they're all written by different people under the pseudonym of Carolyn Keene. And then as I moved into my teen years, um, definitely Judy Bloom. <laughs> I was a huge Judy Bloom fan. Um, Lois Duncan. And I went through a big Anne Rice phase when I was a, a little bit later on in my teen years. So um, yes, I've had my, my dark reading phases. Um, and then as an early adult, um, kind of right at the cusp of, you know, going from those teen years to your early 20s. Um, Donna Tartt's The Secret History came out right around the time I was, I think, about 18, 19. And that book had a huge influence on me. Um, I really got into Mary Stewart at that time because I was going through a love affair of King Arthur. Um, definitely Agatha Christie. Um, I discovered Lori Colwyn around that time. Um, as I went on in my 20s, Helen Fielding, because Bridget Jones's diary was big. Um, so yes, yeah, so those are definitely some of the authors that kind of influenced me in my earlier, earlier years. But, you know, as I look forward from there, all the other authors I've mentioned, they're definitely, they've been favorites for most of them for quite some time. Now we're moving on to some genre specific book questions. The first is, do you have a favorite genre you like to read from? The answer is yes. <laughs> um, my two favorite genres are definitely fiction and mystery. I particularly like fiction written by women, particularly by British women authors, particularly written from say about the 1930s to the 1960s, 70s. Uh, that is a real sweet spot for me right now that I am really enjoying a deep dive into. Um, and then for mysteries, I again, I really do love British mysteries in particular. Um, they'll read any kind of mystery that is well written in my opinion. <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so those are some of my, my favorite genres. Then on the flip side of that, uh, someone asked, is there a genre you struggle with and why? Are, they, are there any genres you've really tried to get into but find you can't get any traction or interest? I would say the, the genres I read the least are probably science fiction and fantasy. Um, I'm just not as drawn to them. And that's not to say that I don't ever read them, but they're not my go-tos for sure. Though there's always exceptions to the rule. And then I was trying to think of a genre that I've tried to get into that I can't really get any traction with. And really the only thing I can think of is not a genre, but is a category, like an age category of books. And that is young adult books. I just think I have, I have moved past the young adult book phase of my life. And I'm, I'm over the teen angst. <laughs> um, and I, don't usually want to read books that have been categorized as young adult, even though I loved them when I was of that age group and in my early 20s. I it's just not what I want to read these days. So there you have it. <laughs> Next, we're moving on to some questions about classics. The first is, is there a classic that you have wanted to read, but it intimidates you? I have two really more authors. The first one, if you watch my videos, you're going to recognize this, and that is Virginia Woolf. I have been intimidated by her, even though I've read one of her books, Orlando, which is a weird place to start. I recognize that, but be that as it may, I still find her a bit intimidating. Though I did start Mrs. Dalloway on audio in June, and unfortunately, I had to return the audiobook to the library because it became due and there were holds on it. So I am waiting for it to become available again, and then I am going to read it because I did actually enjoy the first little bit of it that um, I listened to, and it wasn't nearly as intimidating as I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to get on board with Virginia Woolf and read more of her. And then the other author I find intimidating, not because there's anything about it that I particularly find difficult to read, but just because his books are big chunksters. And that is Tolstoy. <laughs> I've had this copy of Anna Karenina for a long, long time. I've even marked it. I was going to do a group read of it. I, <laughs> some years ago. I made it to page, where did I make it to? 
a minute to page 272. Um, and then I just lost my steam. So I'm considering that maybe every year what I need to do is what I have been doing with Middle March, which is reading the book kind of spaced out, even if it wasn't serialized and reading it in the you know, way in which it was serialized originally, um, but just kind of spacing it out because I do find um, that I get a little bit bogged down when I'm reading a big chunky classic book for, you know, a very consolidated um, space of time. So I'm thinking maybe something like Tolstoy or Dickens or something like that, picking one book like that. The Count of Monte Cristo is another book I'd like to read um, and spacing it out throughout the course of the year and just doing that every year. So that's something I'm thinking of. Then the next question about classics is, I would love to ask what classics you don't get the hype for. <laughs> This is a fun question. The first one is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. Again, for all the reasons I don't like young adult novels, so much angst. Plus, just Kathy and Heathcliff, they are so terrible. And it's so dark. And it's just not for me. Not for me. I love Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre is one of my favorite books. I should have mentioned that in my favorite books, shouldn't I have? Jane Eyre. Oh my goodness. How did I forget you? I love Jane Eyre. Um, but not Wuthering Heights. Nope. Not a fan. Um, another book that I don't particularly love that's a classic and I've had to read it a couple of times for different classes and that is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I just find there's something about it that falls flat for me. I also don't like the portrayal of Daisy Buchanan. I feel like she is not a well flushed out female character and she very much feels like she was written by a man and it doesn't work for me. Uh, the next classic that I don't really get along with is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury and it may be pushing it because I, I read this in high school at a time when I really was not into science fiction and I just could not get along with this book. I hated every page of it um, and I don't have any desire to ever try to reread it again because it just, I just have this feeling about it where it just, it's not for me. And then lastly, I'm actually going to just kind of lump a bunch of books into this category and that is all of the books by the Beat Poets. <laughs> um, I took a Beat Poets class in college and it was the worst. Unfortunately, I was really excited about it. I thought it was going to be fantastic. Hated it. Hated the professor. Hated the whole vibe in the class. Just, it's not for me. Okay, we're going to move on to the next category, which are personal questions. So I'm just going to answer a couple of, there weren't that many personal questions and none of them were really very personal at all. So happy to share a little bit of my personal life with you guys. So the first question was, do you come from a family of readers? And yes, I think so. I think most of my family reads to some degree or another, my mom in particular. So my mom definitely was the big reader in our house until I came along. Um, we always had books at home. She always made sure that there were books in our rooms, you know, we had big bookshelves in our family room. And so yes, she was a big proponent of reading. My mom was a teacher. So um, that definitely influenced my reading life for sure. And then the next question is, what is your job? And did you study at all? Um, well, right now I'm a stay at home mom. I did work up until my son was um, I don't know, five years old. Um, I worked part time after he was born. But before that, I held a number of different office jobs, none of which were exciting, none of which I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, there's not much to say about that. It, you know, they paid the bills. I, yeah, I should have been a teacher, but I wasn't. <laughs> and yes, I went to college and I was an English major. Um, so I graduated with an English degree and um, what that qualifies me for is to talk to all of you guys here on booktube about books <laughs> and then the last category of questions are booktube questions and the question for this video is would you consider doing reading sprints discord or starting a patreon account if not are you planning anything different for your channel the answer to that is 
yes, yes, yes. I would be happy to do any or all of the above. They've definitely been things that I have been thinking about and considering. Um, and now that I have reached that 2K subscriber mark, it's feeling like maybe it would be worthwhile to me to do one of those things. Um, so what I want is to hear from all of you now. <laughs> would you like me to start a Patreon account? Would you like me to have content that is specific just to Patreon? I have been considering doing some group reads and we could definitely set that up on Patreon and or on Discord. Um, so that is a potential option. Also, a lot of you expressed interest in doing Jane Austen January and that could be something that I could set up via Patreon and Discord as well as doing things about it on my regular YouTube channel. So. Let me know what you guys are interested in. Um, do you want reading sprints just here on my regular YouTube channel? Do you want other things? What would you like to see from me? Let me know because I would love to add more content for you guys to enjoy. Whew. <laughs> we made it to the end, you guys. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much for asking such wonderful questions. I really have, really have enjoyed doing this and um, there's two more videos coming. So stay tuned for the rest of the questions. But now that we're through the questions, let's chat about the giveaway. So let me go through all of the details. First, there will be one winner of the giveaway. The giveaway is open to both US and international subscribers of my channel. Um, and the prize will be a gift card valued at 25 US dollars. If the winner is a US subscriber, you will receive a gift card from Tertulia.com. I have partnered with them and I believe that you'll be able to use uh, my discount code to get 20% off your order and use the gift card. So the code again is GenFans and you can use that to get 20% off your order at Tertulia anytime you want. <laughs> but if you are the winner, um, I believe you can stack that on top of your gift card. Um, but if you are an international subscriber, unfortunately, Tertulia only ships to the US. So I will offer you a gift card valued again at 25 US dollars to whichever online bookstore of your choice ships to your location. <laughs> so as long as I can purchase a gift card for you on their website, that will work. So that is the uh, details of the giveaway. So how do you enter the giveaway? If you sent in a question for the Q&A video, then you have already received one entry into the giveaway. If you leave a comment on this video, that gets you a second entry into the giveaway or a first entry. If you didn't leave a question, that's perfectly fine. You can still get one entry into the giveaway by commenting on this video. So please leave a comment. Don't just like the video. I'm not going to, there's no way for me to check and see who liked the video. So I need you to leave a comment. So you can be entered up to two times in the giveaway. One, by having left a question. Two, by leaving a comment on this video. Um, and please make sure you are subscribed to my channel because I will be checking on that when I pick the winner. Now, how long do you have to leave a comment down below? You have until Sunday, July 28th to leave a comment here and be entered into the giveaway. I will announce the winner in a short and also in a post on Sunday, August 4th. Um, so please make sure you have notifications turned on so that you don't miss out on finding out if you won the giveaway. Um, and the usual caveats apply to this, that this is not sponsored by anybody, by YouTube, by any other companies. This is just me wanting to give a little something back to all of you um, because of the joy that this channel has brought into my life over the past few months. So thank you so much for watching, for liking, for subscribing, and most of all, for commenting and interacting with me. I have enjoyed talking books with all of you guys so much, and I can't wait to continue doing it for as long as I possibly can. <laughs> talking books with you is one of my very favorite things, and I love being a part of this wonderful bookish community here on BookTube. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you, thank you, Thank you. Please make sure you leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, all that jazz, and I'll be back with another video very soon. Bye.